Welcome and happy Monday. It is Small Business Rally Point presented by Bank59 and our friends at Quick Trip. Today's Rally Point is going to feature a roundtable discussion. I've got a few Idea Collective announcements and an opportunity to get excited about the Idea Collective retreat. We have one of our partners here today, Pat Riley from New Horizons of Wisconsin. He's sponsoring the Swanky Celebration Dinner. So we'll check in with him and see why he's doing it again and what's the latest with New Horizons of Wisconsin. But uh, we're going to open the floor in a few minutes and give you a speaking part because we want to have a good discussion today about our topic. Today, I want to talk about growth. And I want to talk about what it takes to get outside your comfort zone because that's where all the good stuff is. So I want to have a conversation about doing it scared, about doing something you've never done before. Because the only way to get out of our comfort zone and grow is often to take risks and try things that we never could see ourselves doing in the past. I can't believe I did the thing. Or, wow, I never thought I would be the type of person that would dot, dot, dot. So when you think about those new items and you try something that might be a little bit scary, um, that's when you know that you're on the path to growing and getting better at what you're doing. So I'm going to come to you in just a few moments with two questions. So put your little thinking toque on, Alex. All right. So here are the two questions. One of them is easy. One of them is hard. And I'll come to you in a second here. The easy one is, what's the last thing in your business that you did scared? Just scared you to death, but you did it anyway. Then the hard one is, what's the next thing that you know you got to do, but you're scared to do it? That's the part of the discussion I'm really looking forward to, because I'm sure each of you has a thing, I'm pointing at you, that you know you need to do, but you haven't done it yet. So to give you just a minute to think, I'm going to share with you my answers, uh, just to give you a little time to process, right? JB put the questions in the chat. Thank you, JB. So. The last thing I did scared was, well, this time last year, the terrifying thing was signing up for the Idea Collective Retreat, right? That was terrifying last year. And then the last thing that I did that was completely terrifying is that I signed up for the 2022 retreat. So the 2021 retreat was, I've got a great big idea and yeah, hello, have we met? I get excited by ideas, so we go try stuff. So that was just like, you know, blind enthusiasm. Like, this is going to be great. We're going to do it. I remember my first model for the retreat had 500 guests. So like, this is going to be amazing. We're going to split the atom. Uh, and then it went great emotionally. And everyone that came, we had a killer time. Reviews were through the roof. It was awesome. Financially, like you've seen those pictures, the Wild West movies where the tumbleweeds roll down the street, right? Not so Gucci. So the terrifying thing for me, the last terrifying thing I did really was to sign the contracts for the hotel, for the AV, for Mike McCallowitz, for all of the people that are coming. Absolutely terrifying. Yet those decisions were made in February of this year. Now it's August. I'm so happy that we did it. Everyone's excited to come back. It's going to be big and it's going to be engaging. And where would we be right now if we didn't have the retreat to look forward to? So I'm totally glad that I did it. And it totally opened up the business. And this year won't be tumbleweeds, right? It's not going to be like a waterfall, but it won't be tumbleweeds, right? So I'm really glad that I did it. So that's the last thing I did that I was scared about. The next thing that I'm completely scared about is taking the Pat Miller show and put it out there for syndication. To take the show and say, all right, damn it, we're going to put this show on the radio. Because the podcast is out there. I feel good about it. I've had some people ask me about it. Jamie White got in my head last week about it saying, well, why don't you just go make it a radio show? Damn it, Jamie, why did you say that? So I spent all weekend working on it. Now I'm spinning up my radio colleagues and getting their feedback on it. And that's the next scary thing that I think I need to go do. All right, so there. That's easy. So get ready to unmute your microphone because I'm coming to you, David Bellman. You get to go first. What's the last thing you did in your business that scared you to death? 
Okay. Well, the last thing I did that scared me to death was I took out a development loan on a brand new project in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> and it was, it was a $3 million loan. So that's not, a, you know, a short amount of money by any means. Um, even though you joke that I have a unlimited pit of money, unlimited uh, I'm still looking money. for it. So if you can find it, I'd, I'd love that. But um, no, we, yeah, we took out a development loan. Um, and my thought when I was doing this project was if I can get five sales in this project in the first year, um, that would be successful. We had 14. So, uh, you know, beyond my expectations. So very happy with that. Um, yeah, so that was, but, you know, talk about a mental hurdle, but, you know, my, my rationale was this. It's like baseball, right? If you just stand at the plate and you don't take a swing, you're, you're not likely to, to get much. You, maybe you'll get a walk, right? Right. But if you take a swing, you could get a double, you get a triple, you get a home run. So I had to, I had to take a swing. Okay. I didn't want to go down looking. So what's the next thing? What's the next thing you know you need to do, but you're terrified to do it? Okay. So the next thing that I have to do, and um, you know, obviously we're, we're into a kind of a, a, a downturn here on the housing market. So um, I have a lot of product hitting the market. Um, unfortunately, because of that, um, I don't normally finance anything that I do, but besides the development work, um, I, I'm going to have to just take a loan out on my building just for operating expenses over the next couple months. So um, because we have a lot of stuff that's like three quarters of the way built, mm -hmm. but not done. So I know that when those sell, I'll be fine, but it's just like, oh, I hate borrowing money for a short term like that yeah. um, just to cover expenses. But all my stuff is in hard assets and, you know, we just have to sell them. So sign in that piece of paper. Right? Yep. I don't really want to do it, but I know that that will <laughs> make things a lot easier. So, yeah, it's just watching cash flow and uh, getting through that uh, kind of little lull. All right. Good. Good. Thanks for sharing. Alan Fisher, yeah. last thing you did that terrified you in the business. What was it? We joined the idea collective. Oh, just kidding. please. Just terrifying. Kidding. Who are these people? <laughs> Who's this Pat Miller character? Seriously. Um, actually, it was probably the, one of the first things I did in business is I, I packed up from Milwaukee, moved to Green Bay to start in being a financial advisor. So I moved to a whole new town where I, I knew just a few people. Uh, there were guys that were in the business that, uh, convinced me that I should get into this business. So that was probably the last scary thing. And how um, did that turn out? Did it, was it a good move or is it something that you learned from at least? I learned from it. It was a good move. I think initially, um, looking back, I probably would have been farther ahead if I had stayed in Milwaukee and done this the whole time rather than 11 years in green Bay, mm -hmm. but, uh, it was not bad by any stretch. So. I did 11 years in Green Bay. I did 11 in years. in jail. Yeah, I did 11 almost. years in Green Bay. <laughs> All right. So almost. what's the next thing? Next scary thing you got to do? Next scary thing is I got to find a, a book to buy. And books are very expensive right now. So I can understand David's fear of signing seven-figure notes. Um, that, so wait, let me understand. Up. What do you mean? Like Pat Riley's a financial advisor. He's going to retire. So you'd go buy his client list from him, like that kind of thing? And you do that just to continue to scale the business? Yeah. Yeah, that's the easiest way to grow right now is to buy out somebody that's looking to retire. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I'm actually young in the profession right now, which is scary as hell. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of people that are 65, 70 years old still in this profession. There's more people older than me than younger than me as financial advisors. So, Okay. So if you can get into a good position, you could really scale in the next couple of years. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, Big money. What happens? What happens. Okay. We have a theme signing our name away for loans. <laughs> JB, how about you? Last scary thing you did in the business. What was it? I took my product to market, right? Like in August, I took, I literally pulled the trigger that I've been sitting on for two years mm -hmm. as it's been developing in my brain. And I put the website together with the help of Susie Moon and the team and, you know, took something to market, even though it hasn't had any sales. Um, it's still, that was still a pretty big milestone for me. What um, empowered you to make that leap? Like when, what were you feeling when you're like, well, I don't want to do this, but I know I have to, so I might as well do it. What was the deciding factor? <laughs> okay, this is going to sound terrible, but I can't just sit here talking about the thing I want to do for two years and never fucking do it, mm -hmm. right? Like it's real. Like I, you guys have heard me going through the iteration process about like, well, what about this? And what about this? And 
<laughs> it, there's a whole different level of like accountability. Yes, AFW. And Andy had said something like right around the same time that I actually was at the event that was like, it's not, you know, fail, it's learn. And that really resonated with me too, because I couldn't learn from what I was launching until I launched it. Hmm. So that was, I, um, I'm a, in, there's a, 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 an assessment out there called the Colby. And in the Colby, I am really high as a quick start. That's why I like ideas. And I'm really high in fact finding. So those are great. But the slowest things I'm at, the things that are slowest at are um, execution and follow through. <laughs> and it's true. It's true. Yeah. So like, I, and I'm really good. Like, let's get the product to market. Well, now I got to, the next big thing is I got to follow up. Like, I can't just be uh, like, so I bought it. Nobody bought it. So, okay. No, I actually have to follow up on the leads, which I started my 10 leads a day. I have started today and I am following up on 10 leads a day, reactivating my past list. Like the, this week, I'm going to follow up on 50 opportunities this few weeks to fill my book for the end of the year. So yep. there you are. That's, so that's what we got. That's the next scary thing is to hear no a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that like, they don't like what I have to offer, but that doesn't mean that we still couldn't do some work together. I mean, that's. Okay. It's it's really not even usually no. It's like, well, what about this instead? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, if we want to be like completely positive about it, you won't hear yes unless you hear no. So maybe you'll hear right. some yeses this week and that way your uh, Friday finish line beverage will taste extra good. Next week's Friday finish line. Oh, I that's actually true. Have to, to build into this, but I did send out 11 messages today. That was, I have to do at least 10 and I've already heard back from one. Okay. He's saying we're willing to have a conversation. So I'm like, and these are all warm leads. Mm -hmm. This is not like cold calling. So I need to freaking do the thing. There you go. Okay. That's it. That's me. Do the thing. All right, Milena, you're kind of in a interesting situation because of your employment situation. What's the last scary thing you had to do in your professional <laughs> life? Quitting my full time job and I'm out. starting a business. <laughs> Peace out. And how did that feel looking back on it now? How does that make Every you feel? Every, I'm happy I quit my full-time job. I don't have regrets about that, but I want to quit every day yes. <laughs> on my business. So uh, I want to quit on my business every day because it's like, it just, my head is big right now from all the information and stuff. And I don't know. I just, I have a gut feeling that I'm doing the right thing. So I'm just trying to keep going, even if it's just a small steps. Yeah. But it's definitely scary. Like until I feel like I'm, I still I don't think I still feel like I'm full into it. I feel like I'm just stepping a little somewhere that I don't know where. <laughs> yeah. What is the next scary thing? Landing your first client or second client or what? What's the next scary thing? I think just getting. I I'm I have, you know, I would say I have small project and I can say that I have one official client, but it's just for a project. So it's not like a regular based client. So I think just getting more clients. So Jennifer, I will be with you. Just those, you know, reaching out, cold calling. I hate that. So I'm I probably I will never do it. <laughs> so I'm just um, trying different ways to reach out to people and network more, market myself because I feel more comfortable with it. And I don't know. I'm just bad at sales because I hate sales, ah, unfortunately. You're getting better at sales. Don't say you're bad at sales. JB's got her hands up there. Are you going to give it to her, JB? Susan Trumpler would kick your butt right now. <laughs> so, so I'm learning how to do sales better. Right. Nobody, no, very few people are gifted at sales at the very beginning. It takes practice. Yes, it sucks. And you still have to do it in order to actually get business because otherwise you're not going to. Business. That's true. That's All right. Correct. Thanks for sharing, Milena. Okay, Alex, how about you? Last scary thing you had to do in the business was? Well, I, I guess it's always scary when you land like a gigantic client and you charge more than you ever have and you get it. And then next thing you know, you got to do the work. That's what's kind of terrifying. You know, I'm. Right. it's funny to hear like Melina talk about um, the sales aspect. I'm actually really good at the sales aspect now. But now I have the problem of doing, you know, doing this monster work that I, I said I was going to do. And then sometimes, you know, those thoughts creep in and you wake up after four hours of sleep and it's like, oh man, I got to, you know, I really got to come through because I, you know, I, I sold myself pretty hard. So mm -hmm. 
But uh, yeah, and, and we give ourselves only a couple of weeks to do major projects. So we came through, but it wasn't easy. It was a lot of burning the candle on both ends. So sure. I would say that was hard. It was exciting to get a huge, you know, payday, a, a huge project, but it, it's scary to, you know, sometimes you it, you doubt yourself and you're worried that you're not going to make it. And I mean, luckily we did, but and you did. We, we worked our butts off. And so reward, right? Yeah. Uh, what is the next big thing that's scary? I think uh, the future is what's scary. I've talked to you a little bit about this um, previously, but just try, trying to set that big galasso for, you know, what, what's what's my next thing? That's that's actually what's freaking me out. It's, I, you know, we're kind of killing it with our business. It's like, what's the next, yeah. you know, what's the next thing? And that, yeah. To me, that's that's the hardest thing is when you can't see mm-hmm. where you want to get to next because my CEO doesn't want to turn us into an agency. She likes things the way it is. So what what's going to be the next, you know, what's going to be the next carrot? So yeah. Yeah. Listen to your CEO for a lot of reasons. <laughs> yes. Especially when you're married to her. That's right. That's exactly right. What would you like to do? Yes, dear. And business partner. Understood. Yeah. All right, Pat so Riley. Gonna... How about you? Last scary thing you did. You're muted. I took great pleasure in muting you. Now you need to be unmuted. You're the one who fucking muted me, so unmute me. <laughs> What's the last scary thing you did in your business? Um, like like several others, I, I had to take out a loan uh, for operating capital. Uh, and uh, they put your name on that. And... Uh, you're you you have to pay that back Mm -hmm. and uh so we've had some challenges with the government here recently and them changing the rules and not telling people and it's just been a nightmare with some of our uh our career uh uh students and things like that we're finally getting towards the end of that i think maybe possibly Mm-hmm. Uh, which would be uh, huge for our business, but we've really struggled here during the summer. But I think that I think we're going to have a good fall. Um, what's the next I, scary thing you got? At least I certainly hope so. Um, we are we've been an IT and business skills training company our whole lives. That's what we've done. That's what we've been. That's what we are. Uh, we are getting into da, 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 uh, medical uh, training for basic medical uh, careers and things like that. We have a very high demand for that with the uh, the people that we serve. And so we're going to be getting into the medical field, uh, which is completely different. And something that I don't really understand that well, believe it or not, I don't have a medical degree. Hmm. Um, I, I know, I, know I, I sound like I do <laughs> with the intellect and- Of course. Brilliance. One, one would assume neurosurgery. However. That I put forth, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I don't know squat about it. So we're learning uh, and working with a partner on that, and uh, so it's a, it's a, a whole new world for us, and uh, and we're getting into it. So it's 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 very exciting. Uh, a whole new product line for us, sure, and one that we think can help a lot of people. Yeah, that's a gold mine if you can figure that out. There's so many people in need of medical training. That could be a thing. We're going to come to you in a second and talk about New Horizons in just a moment. Susie Moon, I know you're driving. Can you join us from the dog park? Can you tell us the last scary thing you drive safely? Can you talk about the last scary thing you did in the business? I would say the comedy skit was probably the scariest. Not that it's affiliated with my business, but it shows my personality and more about me. Um, so that's scary. And the fact that I might have to stay up till 11 PM at the retreat (laughs) and do another comedy skit, that is the thing that scares the crap out of me. So yeah. You've got two months to figure that out, right? That's the next thing. It takes that long to prepare to write the jokes because I have to make sure that it's neutral for the audience that there that is there i don't want to offend anybody no 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 (laughs) you you want to offend everybody do you even know your audience if you're not going to offend them come on yeah right let's be honest no i want to be offended 
Roger's going to be there for Christ's sake. I love I love being offended. It's one of my favorite things. Right, uh, Susie. Don't if you clean it up too much, it won't be you. Like That's hold true. on. All right. Listen, I'm not processing any refunds for the retreat because you didn't cuss enough. So just you put on your you big girl pants and bring it. Actually, we can have a waiver. We'll just put let's put a, a panty line production disclaimer on the door yes. saying you, you, you will be offended by Melena. Yeah. You will be offended. It's really a matter to what degree. That's true. Let right. it be. That's true. Yeah. All right. Drop so, some yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. And yes, I can't wait for that uh, uh, surprise Susie Moon uh, closer on uh, Friday night after two hours of family feud and bar. It's going to be, we're going to be primed, lubed, as they say. We're going to be okay. lubed. We're going to be lubed. All right, cool. Thank you, Susie. Appreciate it. Okay. So in a moment, we're going to open the floor back up for anything that you've been seeing, hearing, or feeling in your business. We can share that, but I do want to check in with Pat Riley real quick. Uh, Pat Riley runs New Horizons of Wisconsin. I want him to tell us about that. I also want to thank him for sponsoring the Idea Collective Retreat Celebration Dinner, which is, to me, in my little heart, and I haven't really explained this very much, to me, that's the signature event of the retreat, where we get around a table, we share our success we celebrate our wins and we remember why we're doing all this stuff. I want that to be a very special thing that we do every year. Pat is helping us make it happen. So Pat Riley, if someone doesn't know about New Horizons, tell everyone about it real quick. Sure. Uh, we're the state's uh, largest uh, IT and business skills training company. And we've been doing this now for, well, since 2014. I can't do the math. So however long that is, again, not a, not a medical doctor. Uh, and uh, we have locations uh, up in the Fox Cities in Madison and Milwaukee. And uh, we are uh, just doing great things for a lot of people, both who are in IT as a career and who want to get into IT as a career. So we're helping people on the B2B side and we have a career division that's doing, uh, well, until the government decided that they were going to play games on literally Independence Day, um, we've been doing some great things there. So um, very, very proud of my company, uh, mostly because of the wonderful, wonderful people that I have been fortunate enough to attract uh, to join me in this journey. Uh, we have wonderful people. Uh, at New Horizons of Wisconsin. They are service oriented and really, really care about the folks that we work with. We have over 800 live classes that we offer uh, at any given time yeah, uh, right think, now. So it's wonderful. I think members of the Idea Collective would be surprised how many courses your company teaches that they could take to get better at running their business. Because essentially, if it plugs into the wall, you train it. Isn't that right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that simple. Um, and, uh, you know, one thing that you and I could talk about is whether or not we put together some kind of a discount program for members of the idea collective. I think that's true. I think we should. I, I think we could do something like that, that, uh, you know, we could, uh, I'd be willing to, to share uh, a little bounty with my friends in the idea collective. Heck yeah. And, uh, so I'd be, I'd be happy to do that. And, uh, but, but essentially we train everything from word level one, which we still do by the way, folks, um, all the way into cloud computing, AI, machine learning. Uh, uh, and our fastest growing area is in leadership skills and business development. And we see a lot of growth in that area uh, as IT becomes uh, less of a silo and more um, ubiquitous across the organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, and people are really interested in improving their leadership skills, their time management skills, you know, being a part of a team, all of those sorts of things. We're seeing a lot of growth in that area as well. So um, it's very, very uh, intriguing to see what types of things businesses uh, really need today. I don't think it's a secret to anyone 
that when the Idea Collective started, I invited you to be a founding 50 member because we were working together already yep. before the Idea yep. Collective. Yep. Then I came up with the idea for the retreat and came to you as a client, said, hey, would you sponsor something? And because yep. of the relationship that we had, you did, and I'm grateful for that. But you didn't have to come back this year. What have you found inside the Idea Collective? Why are you back helping us again this year? I'm grateful for it, but I'm curious, what are you seeing inside the group that makes it worth New Horizons being a part of it? Because you asked me. That's a good answer. And I like everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, I enjoy, I enjoy the uh, camaraderie, and I'm looking forward to going to wherever the heck it is in Florida, or not Florida, Florida, uh, uh, Cancun. Yes, yes. Pat is going to be on the uh, Galazzo Express with us with his uh, better half, and I mean that. Uh, and oh, oh yeah, she's delightful. much better. Yeah, she's much better than yes, I am. She's spectacular. She's uh, a much better human. They're on the trip. How do we find uh, all of your training and your uh, stuff if we want to take some classes? What's the website? New Horizons WI.com. It is that simple, ladies and gentlemen. It is. And Pat's a longtime member of the community. If you need him, you can reach out inside the group. Yeah. Uh, all kidding aside, even as much as I love to mute you, I'm really grateful for your support and thank you for coming back. This Always. Year. Appreciate it. Always. All right, cool. Let's go back around to the gallery view here and let's just open the floor. Is there something going on that you're seeing that you'd like to share? Seeing, feeling, or observing inside the business community or inside your business? Something that you'd like to bring up and either ask about or share something that you've seen? David, you just got done hosting Young Guns. What what kind of themes and what kind of... Um, uh, thoughts came to your mind when you were in front of your entire audience and talking with all the entrepreneurs in your space? Yeah, you know, um, we're going to be sending out a survey uh, pretty soon, um, just with some topics that we've been kicking around. So, um, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that one of the topics we have is uh, protecting your business. So it's a little different where we, what we're looking at is enveloping like cybersecurity, um, the, the lawyer piece and then like the insurance piece, it's not sexy stuff, but it's th those things that you don't want to do every day, but you need to look at every once in a while, make sure that you've got everything in place. So that's one thing that I think will help a lot of people. Um, uh, we've got some really good experts in that area. Um, the other thing is, um, there's sales is always like the lifeblood of any business. So I think we're really talking about a lot of that kind of stuff. So just, um, how to close, how to, um, uh, storytelling your business was another one that we were talking about. Um, and another one that I'm really interested in, and I'm not sure if the group's fully on board with it, but I really love like the personality part of the business and how different personalities all interact. Mm -hmm. So that, we call it like behavioral archetypes. So that's something that we're kicking around. Can we bring somebody in to, to help understand why people make the decisions they do and how they operate? Kind of like what Jen was saying earlier with her profile and how she likes to, I call her shit starter, but <laughs> yeah, you start the stuff, right? And then you don't quite finish it, but you know, everybody has different skills. So there's some people that are visionaries yeah. that can, I got these great ideas, but then as soon as it comes time to work on them, they can't work on them. Yeah. And then sure. they need the implementer to come in and finish. So that's, there's all sorts of stuff like that, that I think people would be interested in learning about. So if you like any of those things, let me know. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Uh, anyone else have something going on that they've observed? Pat, did you have something? I saw you raise your hand. No, I was just going to say he and Brad Herta should talk. Yeah, for real. For real. Yeah, you and you and Brad Herta should get together because he does he does a lot of that. We've used him before at major clients to do those very things, and he's done a great job. Yep. yep. I know. I know Brad. I was just on his podcast. I think it comes out next week. So, but I'll talk. Oh, okay. That. Never mind. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. It's, I was just on a show. Oh, that Brad Herta. I know. Oh, that Brad Herta. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was on his show. No, that's awesome, David. I love it. Uh, Alan or Alex, anything that you've seen you want to share that you've seen? Alan, no. Alan's just hanging back. It's all good. I'm buying businesses, scaling things. Alex, anything you want to share? No. No. And JB? I want to know Jennifer's big thing. I want to know what that is. Hmm. JB, what's your big thing? Might need some what's, more context on that, Pat. What do you mean? What's your big thing that you did? What's your big website thing? What's your thing? Oh, the product. Um, so, yeah. So we've been partnering with outsourced IT companies for the past two years or more, um, helping them like with their marketing side of things by delivering content to their customers or prospects. Like, so they're like, hey, 
can you come in and do a 30 minute session on OneDrive? Sure. Right. And I've never gotten paid for it because I'm thinking it's multiple. It's like lead gen on both sides. And, and it also was relationship building with that MSP. Well, finally, I'm like, why don't I just provide scalable content to them once a month that is engaging, that they can use for their marketing stuff. And you just have something unique to offer because everybody else is out there talking either cloud storage, security, or cybersecurity. <laughs> Like that's just, you, you can only hear it so many times. Right. So that's what I've been doing. Cool. Awesome. You don't need to do to build the business. You need to hang out in more hotel lobby bars and you can grow your business real fast. Right. Dude, if I could land at every, if every time I hung out in a hotel lobby bar, I landed a $7,000 gig that would, I would be in the bar for ever. ever. Right. If you missed the story, she landed a client at the retreat last year. So we, we were drinking in the bar Wednesday night and she met these guys from Iowa and it turned into a deal. Good for you. Yep. Yep. You're a pro. You're a there pro. we go. And Thanks I can't for... think of the last time that someone was a, getting professional business in the bar, hotel bar, right? Like, oh, I made some money in the hotel bar last night. Isn't usually computer training. Yeah. Can we no, no. Just a moment on that. So here's how this story actually happened. I'm not sure if we should still be recording for this. No, well, well, you know. Oh, we're, there's a whole bunch of us in the bar before the conference even starts. And it's Pat and about 30 women. And he's making his rounds. And there are these three guys, three or four guys sitting at the table next to us. And they're just watching. And they're like, what's this dude who is entertaining 30 women? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to just step over here and explain Pat and his harem. And it went, yeah. And so I, and there were definitely beverages involved. Oh yeah. And and then they happened to be an outsourced IT company from um, Iowa that was there doing their annual strategic planning. All right. So so the moral of the story, gentlemen, is to get there Wednesday night. That's what I'm telling you. You got to get to the retreat Wednesday night. That's where all the fun. You happens. never know what business can be had. I don't know if guys are allowed. If you're thirty on one, I mean, guys are absolutely allowed. For yeah, you, yeah. Ellen Fisher, you can come to the retreat whenever you want. That is yeah, the truth. Yeah, it's true. Right. Uh, well, thanks, JB. Okay, so I want to make a few announcements before we log off for today. Uh, one thing just happened, and it's an absolute need that I have. Uh, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., I'm recording an episode of The Pat Miller Show, and one of my guests just canceled. I don't know if anybody's free tomorrow morning at 9 that wants to come on the show, but I need someone to interview. Uh, consider it if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. It's about a... 30 minute commitment to come on and ask a question or share a small business celebration. One of the two tomorrow morning at nine, Alex, you want to come on? I need you to plan my future for me. Can okay, you do perfect. that? I'd love to. Uh, I'm not sure if you can find our website, but uh, <laughs> find our website and fill out the form real quick. Will you? Cause I could use the thing on my calendar. Okay, but I'm going to push you to the edge tomorrow. Okay, bring it, patmillershow.com. Let's do it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate that. Uh, the other two things I want to share is if you're coming to the retreat, Alan Fisher, you should be booking your hotel room because they are starting to get pressure on the inventory. And that's not me hyping you up. That is me telling you that we're running out of the resort room block for the retreat hotel. So if you're coming, Book your hotel room, Alan Fisher, so that way you can make sure you get our discounted price and you don't run out of hotel rooms. So, Alan Fisher. Yeah, Alan Fisher. That's uh, grandgeneva.com slash idea collective, I think. I think that's what it is. Or it's on the link that JB put in the chat. So thank you, JB. Last thing I want to share is we talked about the Galasso real quick, the trip to Mexico that we're doing at the end of February. We've got kind of like a timing thing going on here where I have to sign, you know, talk about the next scary thing I have to do. I have to make the decision on Wednesday whether or not I'm going to well, sign right. the contract. Gotta... Yeah, that's right, Pat. You got to put your thing in. I got, I'll do that. Yeah, you better. So I have to make the decision on whether or not I'm going to put down a $4,000 deposit for the group and hold 20 rooms and 40 airline seats. Gulp. So if you're thinking about going on the trip, I need you to put your $500 deposit down now because I need to know if we're doing this or not. Because if it gets to be Wednesday at 2 o'clock and we've still only got four of the first 10 rooms filled, I'm not signing that. I'm not going to go and, re I mean, I love y'all, but I mean, putting $4,000 down is is silly if I don't think we're going to sell the rooms. So if you're thinking about it, um, tomorrow at two o'clock, I'm going to host a Q&A session. 
you can either call me and we'll talk or join me tomorrow at two here in the Idea Collective community. And we'll just talk about the trip and why we're doing it. We'll talk about the goal setting process we're going to do from December until February. Uh, and we're really going to talk about all of the uh, tequila we're going to drink uh, and all the tacos we're going to eat and all the good times we're going to have. So it's going to be a blast. So uh, join us tomorrow at two or jump to the link inside the community and put down your deposit so that way we can hold the room. So another edition of the Small Business Rally Point in the books. Thanks to Bank59 and Quick Trip for facilitating the discussion. Thanks to Pat, Pat Riley for his sponsorship of the Idea Collective Retreat. And thank you for joining us and for sharing what's the scariest thing you've done recently as we talked about personal growth, because that's where all the good stuff is. I'm Pat Miller, the Idea Coach. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.